Sierra Leone is a land of hope, peace, love and unity. She has beautiful beaches, sweet culture and a history one can be proud of. After gaining independence, a lot has happened. Most people are proud of it, while some are not. A country is one that defines your identity and gives you the peace to breathe and live beautifully. That country which cultures are like a drip of honey in a baby's mouth is Sierra Leone. Mi Cupboard is a show that educates Sierra Leoneans and the world about the beautiful history and flourishing cultures of Sierra Leone. Join us on AYV TV channel 34 to get that exciting look at the country's beauty every Monday at 8.30 p.m. only on AYV TV with your host Hannah Yankson. It's 2021 and welcome to season two of Me Cover with a lot of exciting culture and certain easy to talk about. So, in this week's episode of Me Cover, we shall be diving into the Serenium Peace and Cultural Monument, which was opened in 2010. I know you are at home waiting to see everything about the Serenium Peace and Cultural Monument. Well, Wait no more as Me Cupboard is here to unfold every details about the monument on AYV TV. I am your host Honey Yangtzee and my beautiful outfit is designed by Bevo Mix Design which is one of the best designing brands in Sierra Leone. Welcome to the Sierra Leone Peace and Culture Monument. The Sierra Leone Peace and Cultural Monument was officially opened in 2010 to bring the significant history that the country owes. It was opened under the regime of Chief Defense Staff Retired Major Alfred Claudette Williams in collaboration with retired Major Paulo Conte, who was then the Minister of Defense. It was built to showcase to Sierra Leoneans and the world that there are craftsmen in the army. It was also built for people to know the partnership of peace between Sierra Leonean civilians and the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces. However, the monument has carvings of great personalities like Senge Pierre, Madame Yoko, Sam Milton Magai, Baibure and much more who play vital roles in the development of the country. Thank you very much. So I am here with Mr. Peter, who will be giving us a tour about the peace and cultural monument for us to learn more and you know, Mika Bot is here for that. Okay, so thank you very much and um, you're most welcome to the Sierra Leone Peace and Cultural Monument. Um, 13 years ago, the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces constructed okay. the Sierra Leone Peace and Cultural Monument during the regime of one of the former CDS, which is the Chief of Defense Staff, okay. retired Major General Alfred Claude Nancy Williams. Okay. So he used his soldiers to build this place as a showcase to the whole world that they are craftsmen in the army mm -hmm. and also to foster the civil partnership okay. between civilians and the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right here at the Peace and Cultural Monument, there are so many monuments. Okay. So we start from here. You can see these two beautiful ladies. Wow. They are just there for welcoming people to the Sierra Leone Peace and Culture Monument. Okay. This one is welcoming people on behalf of Sierra Leone. As you can see, the map of Sierra Leone, like yes. a chain on her neck. Yes. And this one is welcoming people on behalf of Africa. As you can see, the map of Africa, like a chain on her neck also. Wow. Yes. Then over there, we have two elephants, which is clearly telling us that we do have them in Sierra Leone. They are okay. presently at Malabadi Street, 177 miles from Freetown. The place is called as Utamba Kilimi National Park. Yeah? And this elephant, they are working within 300 acres land. If they want to cross over to Guinea, mm -hmm. there is a chain there like this one, bigger one than this part. It has current worth of over 1,000 watts. It will shock them just to scare them so that they will turn back to Sierra Leone because they belong here. <laughs> wow. Yes. Okay, this picture you are seeing here is representing the Lion Mountain. 
This is representing how Sierra Leone got her name. It dates back in 1462. That was the year when a Portuguese sailor called Pedro da Sintra visited Sierra Leone, as he first of all named Sierra Leone as Sierra da Lua. Sierra da Lua is a Portuguese language. It means the Lion Mountain. The Portuguese sailor Pedro da Sintra named Sierra Leone so for two main reasons. One of the reasons is that the time he came, the shape of the land that he saw up to date is just like the shape of a lion. Then the second reason is that the time he came was during the rainy season. So the sound of the thunder that the Portuguese sailor was hearing, he thought it's a lion roaring. So that was why he said, this land is full of lion. So it must be called a Sierra Lua, meaning in Portuguese language, Lion Mountain. Yes. So like I said, the event took place in 1462. From that time to date, it's about 559 years ago. That was the time the story happened. Okay. So let's proceed this way. Okay. Free at last. Exactly so, <laughs> free at last. What you see in the right up there is free at last. Okay. Most assuredly, there was slavery in Sierra Leone, even before the coming of the opium, their own type of slavery. But the type of slavery that was existing in Sierra Leone, it was not as degrading as the one brought by the opians. As the type of slavery that was existing in Sierra Leone, it will be a time in those days, for instance, when the slaves will go and find their relatives. If their masters died, the slaves will inherit their properties. They were given a lot of freedom. But the type of slavery brought by the Europeans, they were using human beings just like the lower class animals. They don't have right to their lives. So this mania is representing the first batch of slaves that arrived in Sierra Leone on the 10th of May, 1787. There were 411, inclusive of 60 unmarried white women. Wow. Actually, those white women, they were prostitutes from England. They came with the slaves, they landed at Kenjimi Wharf. He demonstrated exactly as you can see him on this wall. When they caught his chain, when he said to himself, he is free at last, he is no more a slave. Wow, so emotional. Yeah, and he also demonstrated at the cutting tree, which is at the center of our beloved capital city, Freetown. Okay. As this was the same cutting tree where the slaves used to play and do their marketing activities. There was a small road from that cutting tree leading to present day where we are standing. As this place served as the original working route, we had the slaves work for their various residents in those days. Such villages today are known as Leicester, Gloucester, Regent, York, Banana Island, Battles, Kent, Waterloo, and all other Creole villages. So that is what he's representing here. The Sierra Leone Peace and Cultural Monument signifies the importance of peace and the value of culture in the country. Sierra Leone as a country has gone through a lot of challenges since slavery, independence, war and surviving everyday challenges show how strong the country is. The monument serves as a place to reflect about the past and to know the importance of peace and reconciliation in the country. Then this other personality here is called as Baibure. Baibure. Yes. Baibure, hero of the 1898 Hot Tax War. He was born in the 1840s. He was a great military strategist. Baibure was the man who led the Timni uprising against the British in 1898. As a young man, he was sent by his father to a place called Bendembu for him to go and train as a warrior. And there he earned a nickname called Keblai. Keblai is a word derived from one of the ethnic groups in Sierra Leone, which is the Timni. It means one who never tires of fighting war, or one whose basket is never full of enemies. In 1886, Baibure was crowned as ruler of Kase. But in 1896, after the British have declared a protectorate, since Baibure resisted the hot tax war, they issued a warrant of arrest for him. That was the time he was betrayed by his colleagues because they knew his secrets. So they captured him and they handed him over to the British. Then the British they sent Baibure on exile to Gold Coast, present day Ghana. He was on exile for a good seven years. They brought him back in Sierra Leone in 1905. They reinstated him as chief of Kase. But he ruled for three years. In 1908, Baibure died. Oh, <laughs> This other personality here is called Asengbe Pierre. He was the hero of the Amistad Revolt. He was born in 1813. In late January 1839, Sengbe Pierre was captured and sold as a slave to one Spanish slave trader called Josie Ruiz. On the third day, while they were traveling to the Shurakin Master's farm, he secretly used one of the spikes in the boat and caught his chain. 
When their masters went down the boat, as you can see the boat, it was a three deck, one, two, three. So as soon as their masters went down the boat, he quickly went to his colleagues. He cut their chains. Then he said to them, go and kill the captain. The name of the captain by then was called Captain Ferrer. They went, they killed Captain Ferrer. Then they threw his body in the water. Then St. Pierre told those who were controlling the boat that, take us back to Africa. But since they have little or no idea about navigation, for them to locate Africa as a whole, or Sierra Leone to be specific, it was not an easy task. Wherever they turn, what could they see is water. So it was just saying to those who were controlling the boat that, turn the boat to where the sun is rising from, as they would believe is Africa. But they were tricked, especially at night. During the night, those who were controlling the boat, they will turn the boat towards Cuba. Then the boat will be in its highest speed. During the day, they will turn the boat towards Africa, but the boat will be in its slower speed. Finally, they were captured by making soldiers, they charged them for murder and piracy. But the sixth president of the United States of America, John Quincy Adams, he was the man who advocated on their behalf so that they would bring them back to Sierra Leone. He succeeded in doing that. They brought them, they arrived in Sierra Leone in 1842. But this great hero died in 1879. Okay, so let's proceed, please. Okay, so when we started the tour, I told you that this place was built by the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces. So right up there is one of their logo. The blue anchor is representing the Republic of Sierra Leone Armed Forces Navy soldiers. The swords are representing the infantry section, also in the army. The bar is representing the air wing of the air force. Then at the top is the seal of our country, which is the coat of arm. Yeah? A great woman. Yes. <laughs> This woman here, this personality, is called Madame Yoko, mm -hmm. commonly known as Mami Yoko. She was a very brilliant woman, a woman of culture and ambition. She was born in 1849. In 1884, Madame Yoko was crowned as Queen of Senewu. Senewu is in the southern part of this country, Moyamba district. And there she established a famous Sunday bush, locally called Bundo Bush, a secret society mainly for female. And there she was training young girls all over Kwamende County. And after training them, she would make sure that she gave their hand in marriage to sergeants of frontier police and other important chiefs. She was the first female paramount chief in the whole of Sierra Leone. But in those days, they were not allowing a woman to be a leader. And therefore, she used her friendship with the witches to gain over her subjects. She was even using her charms by mesmerizing the witches so that she will not, she'll not be used in diplomatic missions. Queen Victoria also gave her silver medal for her royalty. The man standing by her side is a praise singer. Locally, we call him as a Yeliba. Whenever Madame Oko does something good, the Yeliba or the praise singer will sing a song of praise for her so that she will get. Her. Exactly, so, so that she will continue in doing a lot of good things. Okay. But she died in 1906. This other personality here is called as John Aka. He was an ambassador of culture and versatile entertainer. John Joseph Aka was his full name. In 1927, he was born. And so, John Joseph Aka, as an ambassador of culture and versatile entertainer, in 1961, they appointed him as the first indigenous director of the Skelon Broadcasting Service. Okay. Today, the name of that institution has been changed to Skelon Broadcasting Corporation. He was the man who founded the National Dance Troupe and he used to travel with them all over the world, even the Commonwealth Art Festival in London. He was the man also who wrote the rhythm of the music of our beloved national anthem. And this is representing the most important verse in the three standards of our beloved national anthem, land that we love as Sierra Leone. Joseph Aka was a man also who instilled in us a sense of pride for our culture. For us to say today we are patriotic Sierra Leoneans and that we are ready to die or defend Sierra Leone at any time. But he also died in 1975. Okay, here are two important political hero representatives. This one here is Sir Milton Augustus Stuba Magai. He was the architect, the father, the leader for Sierra Leone independence, and the first prime minister. He was born in 1895. Then, of course, here we have Dr. Siaka Povin Stevens. He was the prime minister, the first executive president, and for now, he served as the longest serving president in Sierra Leone since then up to date. Yeah? So, Sir Milton Augustus Triba Magai, what he's holding there is representing the agreement, the bond, or tie they went to sign. Sierra Leone, exactly, so Sierra Leone Independence Agreement. As this year, we are celebrating our 60th anniversary since the time we got our independence yes. on the 27th April 1961. So what is sold in there is the agreement. Then, of course, Sir Magai, 10 people went to sign that agreement, but unfortunately he did not sign. Okay. 
for screaming reasons, according to him by then. He said they should conduct election first before ever they go for independent agreements. And before they went, he formed one organization called EBIM, which is an acronym, EBIM, it means Election Before Independent Movement. And because he was having his own different political intention for him to come and form his own political party, okay. as he was the main founder of the present leading party in opposition, which is the All People's Congress, the APC. But again, he was the founder of the present party in power, which is the SLPP. Yeah, yeah. Samuel Timagai and Siaka Pumistini. As you can see them, they attended the same primary school at EUB, that is EUB at Bont. They attended the same secondary school, which is the Albert Academy, and even the same university, which is the Fuabi College. But Samuel Timagai was far away senior for Dr. Siaka Pumi Stevens. Okay. Yeah. But he died in 1964, and this one died in 1988, as he was born in 1905. Okay. Yeah. Okay, this section here is called as the Battle Honor Sections. These are the various rewards or honors given to the Republic of Sierra Leone forces for the various wars they fought. From the First World War over there, the Cameroons from 1914 to 16. But officially, that war ended in 1918. They fought at Caladan, the Bomber War, it was the Second World War. That war started in 1939. But 1943 was the time when the Republic of Sierra Leone forces participated in that war and it ended in 1945. Of course, Yekomok, Douala, North Alakan, Mayon, Congo, all these areas they gave the Republic of Sierra Leone forces and battle honors for all these wars, even the Civil War, which started on the 23rd March 1991. Yeah, so all these areas they gave them battle honors for that. Okay. Here is another center called as the Reconciliation Center. This is a true story that happened during the Civil War in Sierra Leone. This happened all over Sierra Leone. The words in the map of Sierra Leone, they were said on behalf of Sierra Leoneans by these six people with the exception of this man. This man in the blue attire is representing a chief in a specific village. Okay. The woman over there is representing the first and this one, the last wife of this chief. Okay. This man during the war was a rebel, but now we refer to him as an ex-combatant. This ex-combatant, this is representing his mother, his youngest brother and father. But during the war, he was the same man who amputated all these people. It's a true story. And it happened during the Civil War in Sierra Leone. But he was not acting by himself because he was taking drugs. So after the war, he went through a process called the DDR, which is the Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegration Process. So after he went through that process, he went and learned a skill, as this is represented in his toolbox. But where he was residing, he was not earning much money. It was like a course on him. So he therefore decided to go home back one day. As he said to himself, there is no place like home. So he first of all went to his own relatives and he consulted with them. And at once they accepted him. But they told him that it is quite impossible for them to stay with him in that specific village unbeknown to the chief who is the custodian of the law. So he was taken to him so that he will go and reconcile with him also. And this is one of our cultural traditions in Sierra Leone. For an elderly person to show that he or she has forgiven you after you've asked for mercy, it's a matter of most for that individual to lay hand on your head as a sign of forgiveness. So that is what exactly going on between them. So that is why the former CDS who wrote the project for this peace and culture monument said that there is so much in us that unites us, that divide us as Sierra Leoneans. We must recognize this fact and learn to live with one another, said by retired Major General Alfred Clonesi Williams and supported by the current Minister of Tourism and Cultural Affairs, Dr. Maminato Pratt, wow. yeah, because she also played a pivotal role during the time they were constructing this peace and cultural monument. Okay. Your attitude determines your altitude. altitude. Yes. This section here is called so, of course, your attitude determines your altitude. And there's a sectarian set up by the former regime, which is the attitudinal and behavioral change. Mm -hmm. That if we change our attitudes, the Galileans, all these activities, which was going on smooth and effectively in our beloved country, Sierra will still continue today. As right down there, it's representing one of the cash crop we're exporting today, which is the cacao and coffee, okay. football section, Leon Star, the carvers, the fishing sector in Sierra Leone, whatever type of boat that is built here, we used to give them names. Okay. So the name of this boat is written in Pigeon English, we all are one, meaning we are all one. He's representing the old musicians, people who are responsible for cleaning the city, collecting tax, Freetown City Council, 
a trader and a buyer. In Sierra Leone, we have our culture again that whatever products we want to buy, we must bargain or talk for price. So that yes. is what's exactly <laughs> going on between them. Definitely. Yeah, and this is representing the mining sector. Officially, we started mining in Sierra Leone in 1930, Konodi Street. Up to date, we are still mining there. Then, of course, this is dignity in labor. And, of course, this is the educational sector. As we all say, learning is better, better than, than silver, silver and gold. gold. <laughs> but what if I say learning is better with silver and gold? Which one do you prefer? <laughs> so you prefer that silver and gold or with silver and gold? <laughs> what if I say you choose one? Okay, I'll choose that another day. <laughs> because okay. you need the money, you know, to of educate course. yourself. <laughs> and there is a song that we normally sing, which ends in English words. And up to date, the school going people, they are still singing that song. And the song goes like this. We are all going to our classes with clean hands and faces to pay great attention to what we are told. Or else we shall never be happy and clever. For learning is better than silver and gold. Yeah! <laughs> okay, so this personality here is called as an, as an Abia. He was a distinguished soldier born in 1915. He contributed greatly for the Second World War to come to an end as a Sierra Leonean. And that earned him a distinguished conduct medal on behalf of the whole world. And in Sierra Leone, he was promoted from Lance Corporal to a sergeant. But as he was born in 1915, he died in 1987. Okay. This other personality here is called as Thomas Peters. Mm -hmm. He was a true founder of Freetown. Oh, wow. Yes, not that Freetown was not existing, Freetown was existing. Yeah. But there was a nickname they were calling Freetown in those days before ever they named Freetown as we know it today in 1787. So they were calling Freetown as Roma Ron, meaning place of the whalers. Yeah. So Thomas Peters was an Afro-American. He was born a slave in North America and also he works as a slave in North Carolina. During the American War of Independence between 1775 to 1776, he ran away and joined the British soldiers. Then he said to them, look, I have a list of 1,156 in total. We are all slaves. We are going to help you in fighting the American War of Independence. But please, after the war, take us back to Sierra Leone. Yes, and the British, they accepted the demand. And they said, even if after this war, we take you back to Sierra Leone or Africa, you're not going to pay tax. You will not be governed by no one to be by yourself. But all what they were promised in England, when they arrived in Sierra Leone, nothing like that good. Nothing like that. So they decided to go into war with the British soldiers. But most of them, they were killed because they were using sticks, bow and arrow, while the British, they were using guns on them. So they arrived in 1792 March, but he died that same year from cold and malaria. Wow. Yeah? This other personality here is called as Lamina Sanko. He was a champion of integration. Lamina Sanko was the man who brought peace and stability between people who were living in Freetown and those who were living in the provinces. So that was why they referred to him as the champion of integration. Originally, this man was a reverend. He was called as Reverend Ethelgen Nathaniel Jones. But he changed his name to Lamina Sanko okay. because the people who we are with him at Holy Trinity Church present day today at Kisi Road, they said it is not possible for you to be a reverend because, uh, sorry, a, a politician because you're a reverend. So that was why he changed his name from Reverend Ethelgen Nathaniel Jones to so Lamina Sanko. Sanko. So he's well known today. As he was born. Yes, yeah, so that street was named after him again, Lamina Sanko Street. So as he was born in 1884, he died in 1964. Okay. Okay. Personality here is called as Gombo Smart. He was born in 1750. He was a local ruler and entrepreneur. Again, this man, his grandfather and mother were bought as a slave and he was given to the British as a bonus. So he was trained and brought up by the British. As a young man, he was taken to Bonds Island, and there he got the Gombo Smart name. Because originally he was called as Coco, and Coco is a form of gambling we used to play in Sierra Leone, that is by spinning the coin. A game be played between two or more players. Yeah? So because he loved that game, so they were calling the name as Coco, calling him as Coco because he loved that game. But he got the Gombo name when he was at Bonds Island. He went and trained as a warrior. 
because he was so strong, he has all the might. So he was trained and brought up again by the British soldiers. So at a particular time, when they were at Bonds Island, the French people came to attack the British on Bonds Island. So that was the time he had wanted to reveal the British secrets to the French. So the French people, they called him, they said, what is your name? And he said, he's called Gombui. And they said, well, you're going to change or add on your name today called Smart because he wanted to play smart on us by revealing all our secrets to the French so that easily the French will overpower us and take over the island. So that's how he got the smart name so at Bonds that, Island. Is that how the Kuyo people got their son named of Smart? Of course, exactly. So even Kelfa Smart is a descendant from this man, Gombo Smart. Okay. Yeah, one of the prominent politicians. So but if you are called Smart, Know exactly so. So he died in 1820. And of course, this other personality here is called as Pademba. He was a simple head man who used to live along modern Kambusit and Pademba U Junction. Mm. Fuitan was attacked again in 1784 by five French warships as they were fighting the British for them to colonize Sierra Leone. Okay. So that was why he went and said to the British, and even people who were living here by then, under his auspices, saying to them, my friend, you are going to help us fight to fight these British people so that we get rid of them out of this country. And he used these two children as a powerful symbol of reconciliation when he presented them to the British saying, look at these children, they are almost fighting their death now. Let us all come together and stop the war. So they listened to him and the war was stopped. So this was a too powerful symbol of reconciliation that he presented to them. Yeah? Then this last personality here is called as Foreman Samachi. He was the fifth ruler of German Imperial Chiefdom, Kono District. Uh. <laughs> so, so German Imperial Chiefdom was under a particular chief by then called Chief Fonwa. So, because by then the British people, when um, people were coming from Liberia and other sub region to come and find um, diamonds, salt, in terms of economic activities. Foreman Samachi uh, um, wrote a letter to Chief Nyangwa by then. He said, see, these people now, they've come to fight us for our minerals, for salt, and all the rest of it. Please help us. Give us supporting power so that we'll get rid of them. But before Chief Nyangwa responded, he fought all the people and killed them. So they made him the first chief at German name called Kono District. As he was born in 1855, then he died in 1936. It's just like a village setting, and here we have the farmers, yeah. the fisherman, the hunter, the farmer, interpreter, the entertainers, and at the extreme end over there we have the cook. <laughs> then the man sitting right up there is called Patinka. He's the one thinking on behalf of Sierra Leoneans. Oh, All wow. the troubles we have, whether they are the negative problems, one may say, positive ones, he's thinking about all those you ones. You can tell from his head. Yeah, <laughs> his head. And he has been thinking and asking him himself so many rhetorical questions, such as where was the country, where is the country presently, where is the country going, how about the standard of living, the security, the economy. But since he has been asking himself all these questions, he as Patinka has not yet contributed just one percent for the development of Sierra Leone. He's just there to think without implementing anything. And increase his head. <laughs> so I hope you are enjoying the show. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned to AYB TV as we have a lot to show you after this week. Let's go for a short break. <laughs> Sierra Leone is a land of hope, peace, love and unity. She has beautiful beaches, sweet culture and a history one can be proud of. After gaining independence, a lot has happened. Most people are proud of it, while some are not. A country is one that defines your identity and gives you the peace to breathe and live beautifully. That country which cultures are like a drip of honey in a baby's mouth is Sierra Leone. Mi Cupboard is a show that educates Sierra Leoneans and the world about the beautiful history and flourishing cultures of Sierra Leone. Join us on AYV TV channel 34 to get that exciting look at the country's beauty every Monday at 8.30 p.m. only on AYV TV with your host Hannah Yankson. 
Welcome back to me, come on, on AYV TV. In case you're just joining us, don't forget I am your host, Hannah Yangson, and next to me is Mr. Peter, who is giving us a tour in the Sierra Leone Peace and Cultural Monument. Okay. So let's continue. Okay, so this element was carved there for all soldiers who died in all wars, and of which their dead bodies were not seen. Locally, they are called as unknown soldier, but in the army, they are known as, are known as the MIAs, which is missing in action soldiers. Locally, we call them as unknown soldiers. Okay. They died maybe in fire, in water, or with a bomb. Their dead bodies were not seen, but they still honor and respect them because they gave up their yesterdays for the today we are enjoying. Yes. Okay? Um, this woman, her colleague is over there. They are just touch girls. They are just responsible for pointing lines for these other people. Then the one lying down over there also is a woman. She is representing all female soldiers who died in all the wars. And she died like a soldier because when she was ready to give up her life, she turned her chest towards the earth. So that before she could be buried, all her colleagues, especially the soldiers, they must salute her corpse individually and they must fire 21 times. That is the normal procedure for the soldiers. Then the one kneeling down is representing a WIA that is wounded in action. The tallest soldier is representing one of our fallen heroes who died during the Second World War. Locally, he was called as Farama Fagbe. And Farama Fagbe is a name derived from one of the ethnic groups again in Sierra Leone, which is the Kranko. It means, if for example, I'm a stone, I hit on you, you will have to feel a pinch. If you hit on me, you still have to feel a pinch. That is the meaning of his name. He is also referred to as a good and vigilant soldier. Over there is a civil woman with her child. Discrimination is a contributing factor for so many people to die in any war or negative events. So the good and vigilant soldier is firmly preaching against discrimination. He is not saying he's going to save only his colleague soldier and leave the civil woman with a child. He said no, discrimination is not good, he's going to save them all. Wow. So that is what his family is preaching against now. Okay. The back over there is a man called Isaiah. We refer to him as Isaiah because we are referring to the prophet Isaiah in the Bible. So when you read the Bible, Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4, it says, and he shall judge the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up swords against nations, neither shall they learn war anymore. Wow. So he's clearly preaching to us that the guns we used to take and kill ourselves, mm -hmm. let us take those guns, beat them with hammer, turn them to any form of agricultural tool, so that we will use those tools to till the soil, plant and get something meaningful to it. Yeah. So he's now showing us the example. That's that is great. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. Okay. This whole picture here now is representing the law court or the judiciary. Okay. And that's the building over there. This woman locally we are calling her as Mama Salo. Mm -hmm. She is kind on behalf of Sierra Leonean so that justice will prevail in the whole land of Sierra Leone. She is also representing someone who has committed a crime. And now she's pleading for mercy. But the judge showed her the two scales of justice and said to her that we all have equal rights and justice in court. If she has committed a crime, They've explained to her the repercussion for the crime she has committed after they've passed the last verdict on her and that summer has been hit upon an object is a matter of most for her to suffer whatsoever repercussion for the crime she has committed. And the local building you have seen over there was founded on the 15th December 1910. The foundation stone was laid by the Duke of Connaught. The Duke was on his royal visit whilst he laid the foundation stone. Today for us to remember the Duke, his name is placed on one of our government hospitals, which is the Connaught Hospital, presently at Wallace Johnson Street. And the foundation stone that he laid is also representing how strong the laws of Sierra Leone are, because we are using the rigid type of constitution in this of our democratic system of government. Wow. So. Thank you very much. It has indeed been a wonderful day with you here at the Sierra Leone Peace and Cultural Monument. And I hope you at home have learned a lot because Sierra Leone is indeed a land that is blessed with so many history and of course a culture. So I must say I really, really appreciate all those people who laid their life down for Sierra Leone to become the country that it is today. Thank you very much once more. And in case you're just joining us, don't forget that Mick Hubbard will be here again 
same place at the same time on AYV TV, but different topic to talk about. Until then, I am Anna Yanti, and thanks to my production team and of course, a Biba Mix Design for giving me the best outfit and make me look this beautiful. Thank you very much, Biba Mix Design, and thanks for watching. Thank you.